thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. Well, it's time to install our camshaft, and the question I get asked quite often is, how do you choose a camshaft? Well, if you recall, this engine that we're building now, this 440, is going to be a little more of a budget build compared to the other one we built. We're not trying to get over 500 horsepower out of this one. What we're trying to do is get decent horsepower, decent torque, at a reasonable price. So the differences are, besides the internals that we already put in, now we're using cast iron heads instead of the aluminum heads. And here's a the difference. These are 452 heads, which means the casting part number is 406452. These are from the factory made 76 through 78. These are an 88 cc head and the valves are 2.08 inches on the intake valve, 1.74 on the exhaust, very common size, which is a very good breathable size for this engine. The uh, cast iron, of course, is going to be a little heavier, but you should be able to get a set of 452 heads uh, for 150 bucks a set. I bought these heads and I took them apart. Fortunately, everything was in great shape. Did have a bent valve, had to change a, a valve and change the valve guides to make sure that those were all okay. But the, the, head, the, valve, the heads were in very good shape. So the question then became, with the cam we used, could we use, reuse the valve springs that were in the head? The springs were in excellent condition, recently rebuilt. So what we're going to do is we'll take a look at the cam card. We'll compare the cam card from this cam to the cam in the last 440 we built and how we knew, or how I knew, that the springs that were in the head would work with this cam. We'll look at the cam card, we'll look at the machining that was done to the cylinder heads, and then we'll put the cam in. Now the first thing you would do is when you find the cam you want, you go to the website and it'll say recommended components and it'll recommend in this case I went to the ComCam's website looked up the cam part number and it says recommended, cam, recommended valve springs and here are the specifications that they recommended for the valve springs that they were selling so what we do is we take and we look at the uh, specifications and mostly the installed height 1.5 inches and we need to know at the installed pressure we have 142 pounds of pressure our open pressure which is when you open the valve to the based on the lift how much when you open the valve is 340 pounds and the spring rate being 395 they are double uh, double springs we do have a hydraulic cam and a mechanical camshift type so all the other things fit so we we said okay we have to take the valve springs off and make sure that it meets this criteria if it meets that criteria we know that we can use these springs with that camshaft and indeed when we took the cylinder head apart measured all of these dimensions here and the springs fell within so we were able to, reuse, we were able to reuse the springs that were in the cylinder head and if you don't it's really not a huge big deal because you can buy another set of springs for a hundred bucks yeah it's another extra hundred dollars and we did save a hundred dollars but we got lucky so let's take a look at the cam card all right now this is what we got I took the cam card I made a copy of it and what I did is I inserted in red the numbers for the cam for the other 440 that we built and you can see the part numbers are really close this part number is a 23-712-9 the other cam was a 23-713-9 so it was only one part number away and here's the difference here's the difference in the uh, the two cams and it's not very much the the valve adjustment so we know the gross lift the gross valve lift on the other on this cam is 544, 541. On the last cam, it was 549, 544. Not very much, only five thousandths on the intake, three thousandths on the exhaust for lift. Duration. This one has 286, 294 versus 292, 300 for the other one, which means on the other cam the valves stayed open longer. They opened more, they stayed open longer, so it was a more lopy cam. That's how you get more air in, more air out. Our valve timing at 50, we got 15 uh, intake, 15, 58 for exhaust, close 47 and 10 versus, so here's the difference. The valve timing intake at 50 was 12 for, is 12 for this cam, 15 for the other cam. So the intake timing is a little bit uh, sooner and the exhaust 55 degrees it closes a little sooner than the last one at 58 degrees closing this one closes at 44 versus 47 so it closes sooner uh, before bottom at center and the exhaust is 7 versus 10 so again you take a camshaft you have you open the valve more you open it sooner hold it open longer you're going to get more air in more fuel in produces more horsepower but 
with all of that comes the more lopy uh, sound, higher RP, higher idle RPMs, and but that's how you get the horsepower. So there's a cam card for this cam. This is what we had done to the cylinder heads. Now they were clean and Magnaflux checked for cracks all the way around. Machine decked the precision face here, so we had these milled down a little bit. I think we cut a thousandths, maybe two off of these uh, cylinder heads, then re-CC'd them to make sure they were still okay. We put in all new exhaust valves, so all the exhaust valves are new. Only one intake valve was burnt really bad that had to be replaced, so that was replaced. All new valve seats, so the seats that for the valves were replaced. We have the springs which were reused. We have the all, the, all new bronze stem guides, so the, the bronze valve guides are replaced. And all new seals. We reused the springs. Uh, the caps were in very good shape, but when you change your valves, you change the locks or the keys that go in there, you change those anyway. The exhaust face and the intake face, faces were in really good shape. We didn't have to do anything with those. So basically, bought the heads, changed the exhaust valves, clean up the intake valves, do a basic valve job, put in new seats, reuse the springs, put in new bronze valve guides, put it back together with new keys, and we got a brand new set of heads here ready to roll. Everything is prepped. I have lube on all the bearings inside the block and I have my camshaft lubed and I only have lube on the journals where the bearings are. I don't have any lube on my cam lobes because with a roller cam you don't want to put lube on there because the roller could skate when you start it up and that's what you want. So I'm going to try and put this in nice and smooth, nice and straight. It's nice to look down into the valley there, the valley pan. You can see the cam going in, that way you can guide it into each bearing. I don't want to get any of that lube on any of the journals, or the, uh, I'm sorry, the lobes. Now I have two long bolts on the front of the cam here, which makes it a lot easier to guide. I also have lube on the gear where the distributor is going to engage. So I'll go straight in. Looking in the back, make sure I get that lined up. And there we go. Perfect. Nice and smooth. So there you have it guys. It's putting in a cam, selecting a cam based on the valve springs or making sure you have the correct valve springs to match the cam. Now going with the iron heads, the uh, heads were 150 bucks a set. Plus uh, roughly $400, $450 for machining and parts. So we're talking about $600 for a, an excellent set of iron heads versus $2,000 for a set of Trick Flow CNC ported aluminum heads. So that's a saving of $1,400. So you can see as we go along here, the selection of the parts is uh, helping us be more cost conscious on this build. We're not sacrificing too much performance. The cams are really close. The heads flow is going to be really close. Everything's going to be really close. It's just that we're trying to save a little bit of money. So that's how we were able to do that with this. So in the next video, we can put the uh, timing chain on. We'll degree in the cam and we'll put the valve train on so we can measure for our push rods. If this is your first time stopping by, welcome to Pete's Garage. Uh, click on subscribe if you would please. And if you'd like to get a notification when I upload a video, just click on that little bell next to subscribe and you'll get a notification. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.